will also be used to make any adjustments uh, over the 2018 decisions. Can you so, give, give us an idea just where things stand with the snuff box, muscle uh, analysis, review the findings, locations? So I don't have um, you know, the maps of the locations that were used this year with me. Um, the data that we use comes from the Michigan Natural Features Inventory um, and from any new surveys that are conducted by either the Fish and Wildlife Service, Michigan DNR, uh, Michigan Natural Features Inventory. Uh, so, and those are validated findings. I, I'm not familiar with the, that first organization, but so in lay terms, are are snuffbox in our lake system? Yes. Okay. Yes. And. And um, they're in the, probably the flowing water system. In the river system because of the movement of water. There are some well. in lake locations as well. Okay. At the, um, at the mouth of the exits? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Um, not Sometimes uh, quite distant from uh, the inlet or outlet. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some uh, locations that have to be taken into account. The way that was reflected this year um, might have been. Uh, setbacks uh, along the shoreline or setbacks um, from inlets or outlets uh, where there may have been either historical occurrences or um, recently observed occurrences. Um, were the treatment maps that were approved on the permit uh, posted on the website? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and so the other thing maybe to bring in here is that there, there are multiple sources of data and maps um, that might be confusing to people. Um, there may be maps of surveyed locations of species to look at. Um, there may be approved treatment maps from the permit that would you know, indicate where treatments may occur, what kind of setbacks are instituted, um, any kind of other restrictions on the actual treatment map. Um, I don't know if you are posting the actual treatment maps uh, from the treatment report. Yeah, the treatment maps that I post are the ones that Dr. Pullman is giving our applicator, Jeff Knox, and then those same maps are the maps that are posted on the website. Okay, so that's the, tr the treatment treatment directive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are these you know multiple kinds of maps that could be challenging uh, for uh, lay people right. to understand. Totally get that. Um, so I would want to be cognizant of that. Um, and there are nine water bodies involved here. Uh, each with these, you know, different kinds of maps. So, you know, some well attention to that detail. Yeah, then on our side of it, in turn, trying to educate the community, you know, again, it, it, because of the lay view, it, there's a way to create some simplistic information. And then, as an example, here's, here's Doug's map. To me, and again, if it's there, it would be wonderful to see markings of where milfoil in the river system where there's markings of snuff box and so on. That is data, people can see it. You know, I see that I've got milfoil issues here, I've got starry issues here, so on and so forth. I'm not sure that data is available. It, I can't find it. So is it available? Uh, our in a, where we can keep it in a real displayable. What species are, are where? Is that what you're asking? Well, I'm, I'm asking, yes, uh, both in the, the the weed element and then the snuff, the muscle issues or other endangered items as this, this needs to be a living document, so to speak, that as you're getting more data and more data, this can populate okay, that. We, change, we change can the seasons. Yes, change. and we're going to see in 2018, I'm just throwing stuff out, where milfoil was here, starry, that may be gone on, on the 2019 map. You know, historically looking back, you say, okay, there's, you know, it's, it's a living document, it's going to move. So the lay folks, can see this, they can go back to the 2018, they can go, you know, they can see as this program marches on year after year, what's going on. It is virtually impossible for us to communicate anything. Now granted, again, like I said earlier, 2017 was just a troublesome year, not a troublesome, it was a late start, so that created 
you know, some challenges yeah. with communication. It wasn't troublesome. I, I, I apologize for that. The 2018 became a really alarming situation because of the late, you know, uh, you know, thing about the snuffbox muscle. And then there was just a lot of scrambling and people, you're taking calls, we're taking calls, Doug is taking calls, Lisa, you're taking calls. We have to get data that's there. And so people can say, you see, yeah, okay, this, this is what's going on. Right now we're just, that's gonna save everybody's stress in my mind. If I, may, if I may for a moment, and this may be impractical, but if you had a map that would change, so you go online and hit this, and it's a little video showing, it. here it was, you know, over time you get to see, just like watching a, a radar map. Well, you know, I agree with that, but let's do baby steps. Let's well, get, I, I, know, I know if we have the budget for that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, this is things maybe you can share with us, that, or we can get the data, and maybe we would, we have the, you know, and I'm not saying we do, but the ability within our website to direct people because of something that, we see again, this is a management thing. That's a dynamic Let us know system. where you're challenged budget-wise, you know, staffing-wise, maybe, just maybe within our mix of, you know, board members and or community, we have some folks that, I mean, there's obviously a lot of passion with, with the community to donate the 5,000 plus to make out of their pockets to, to make the $10,000 budget for the survey three, four years ago. People really want, and, and it, it, part of the pressure points is data information. And yeah, I think most of the data that you're talking about is already there. As far as like the treatment maps, those are that, Dr. Pullman is going out there and when he's doing his surveys, he's identifying the areas of concern. So people can use those maps if they want to point out where the starry stonewort is, where the milfoil is. I guess I need to be guided because I, I can't find it. Well, so it's I'm on the second page of the main site where you can see the herbicide treatment and harvesting yeah, maps. per lake. So, and then you can go down that list and every single lake and connector is mentioned there and then you click on that lake or connector, you can do the Tamarack connector or Strawberry Lake and you click on that and then you can see what is the 2018 herbicide treatment map and they may be split if there's multiple in that season. So we may have one that says uh, 2018 June um, treatment and then there may be an August treatment and there may be a, another section that might have a harvesting treatment or a harvesting collection. So that information is on there and when I post the updates, when I have on the main page, every time uh, I post an update, it was every two or three weeks, I always included links to that, uh, to those maps, so they can get right to that location, so they can find what lake that they're interested in, and then zero in on what's going on there. So, Well, what's going on there in terms of herbicide treatment or harvesting treatment, whatever it might be for that particular sector, is that Right, but on those maps it also mentions, it'll, it should say uh, treatment of starry or treatment of milfoil, that information is on the then, map. Then I need, if you maybe at some point walk me through that, because I'm, I'm having some challenges with that. Yep. Cause and then one thing it's, it's really important too is people say they want uh, notification of when the treatment's going to happen. They want to be aware uh, ahead of time. They want more leeway in, in knowing when that application's going to happen. And, and there's problems inherent with that because um, a lot of things that affect it are weather. Uh, and so if uh, Jeff Knox has a plan to come out on a Tuesday, but we have really high winds and rain, that needs to change and he posts. But you know that's why I've been trying to push people and I have a, a direct link right on the main page mm -hmm. is go to Jeff Knox's website and he has a treatment calendar on there and he, he can update that quicker so getting people in the habit of going to the website looking at it for updating you know their own information so they can find out okay it looks like Jeff is planning on coming out to my lake on Tuesday so uh, if things are looking bad uh, in the lead up to that Tuesday people should go and uh, check Jeff's calendar that we have online and say oh he's moved it to Thursday because so on and so forth maybe he got behind on another project or the weather or he had equipment issue. So it, you know, we really want to push people to continue to keep looking at it for not only for the updates that we provide about what's going on, planned treatments, but also when those treatments are scheduled. So, so if you have a listserv of everybody who would be interested in receiving that information, Doug could post it and it go to that listserv 
and people wouldn't have to go to Doug to find out the information. And I do send that. They, they do the I do send that out. I have that out. I send that out to. Uh, yeah. Where did you? But yeah, there there was a, a group email listing, but then this is an administrative thing that I guess we can talk about later to get. Um, uh, that's my phone. Sorry about that. Uh, anyways, jeez. Um, Sorry, yeah, we, well, we have a listserv, and so yeah. that's been, I've been adding names to that that have gone on, so I've taken a look at all of the uh, lake associations that we have, and I've gathered those contacts, interested parties, obviously the PBWA is on there, and individual members of the PBWA are included, so that gets fanned out, so that's my notification to everybody that, hey, there's a new update on the website, cool. here are some planned applications, so uh, you should don't, have been don't receiving... Turn on, don't turn on your public.